Hi, you're listening to a podcast with Tom Johnson and Ed Marsh, and we're going to be talking about all things podcasting, um, podcasts on the topic of podcasts. And uh, Ed, can you introduce yourself a little bit, tell people kind of where you're based, what you do, that kind of thing? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Tom. It's It's been a long time, but it's uh, it's cool, and I, I haven't podcasted in a while, so it was nice to uh, to be invited. But uh, I've been a technical writer. I'll be a technical writer for 30 years in February of 2024. Um, I live in New Jersey. It's a rainy Sunday here, uh, so it's a good day to record. Um, but I, I, um, I completely fell into technical writing. Um, I went for an, a temp job, and they said, hey, you'd be good as a technical writing assistant. I'm like, I have no idea what that is, but it paid more than being a reporter. So, uh, so I fell into it and I fell in love with it. And here I am almost 30 years later. Um, I work for a major financial firm and now I work for a thousand person software company. I work for a 25 person software company. Now I work for a 40,000 person enterprise, which is crazy, but, um, it's been a lot of fun along the way. And as you know, uh, I had a podcast called content content. Um, it's on, let's call it permanent hiatus. Um, cause I never say never with that. I just, I'm not ready to quite put it to bed. Um, but it's been a while. So, um, so I think that probably sums things up not, uh, on my side. Permanent hiatus. Now you've got me, you've got me wondering about some things. I see it, you've got drums in your background. And before we started, you were telling me that you, you've actually, uh, got an extensive background in music from, uh, being in marching band to teaching it and directing and all kinds of things. How did you kind of get interested in podcasting in the first place? Yeah. Um, I mean, I had to, you know, for all, of, excuse me, for almost all of my career, I have taken actually for all of my career, I've taken mass transit um, to work in either New York city or Jersey city. Um, so I had time to kill and, you know, what better way to do it? I mean, there was audible back then, but, then there was podcasts, and it's a great way to spend an hour, an hour long commute on a train and on a ferry, uh, or on the walk back and forth to my house to the train station. Um, so, and then you know, it ins- and one of, two of them, uh, two of them inspired me. Uh, one was called um, This Week in Tech, which was that had their own network, the Twit Network, um, and then there was another one called Back to Work with um, Merlin Mann and. Um, Oh, geez, I can't remember his name now. Dan, Dan, um, Dan Benjamin. That's who it is. Hmm. So, you know, they, and it was a time, it was opportunity. And I knew that I wanted to put my name out there. I also wanted to give back to the tech writing community. Um, so I wanted, and I didn't want to come home and block. Like I didn't want to come home and write after writing all day. I did some radio in college. I was a journalism major. And I said, hey, this is a good way to put my name out there. And I knew I wanted to do an interview show. So that way I could show potential employers how I would treat their their clients or their subject matter experts. So it all kind of fell together. Um, and it was uh, it was wildly successful. I had a lot of fun doing it. It took me places I didn't anticipate. And here we are talking about it now. Yeah. I mean, I remember... Um just you had a very laid back style in your podcast and they were pretty in depth. I mean, you, you weren't worried about like making it short or anything. You wanted to really get to know your guests and kind of go in depth. And I, I appreciated that. And the audio quality was, was superb. Uh, I was very oh, impressed. Thank you. Believe me. That. It's, yeah, I learned the hard, well, I learned lots of lessons taking every um and ah and making it perfect and spending way too much time editing down podcasts than I needed to. Yeah. So now but I appreciate uh, that it was respected. So thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, um, tell me um, a little bit why the permanent hiatus? I mean, I, my, my podcast as well, it was sort of like, you know, uh, abandoned for a few years too. And recently I've, I've had more of an interest and I'm just wondering why the, why, uh, why did you put it on pause? Um, it was a confluence of things at the time. I mean, one of the big ones was the pandemic. Like I was home basically for three years um, and I wasn't commuting. So I wasn't, didn't have that time to listen to audiobooks or podcasts. So it was kind of, you know, it was, that was one of the contributing factors. Um, I kind of seen my numbers going down. I don't know if it was due to the, the uh, reduced frequency of the recording, of, um, but I just saw that the metrics and I, there were more podcasts coming out. So there's more competition. Um 
And it was just, and it actually had gotten to a point where when I started the podcast, I had a, a wish list of people like, hey, when I get big, quote unquote big, you know, then I'll hit these A-list people. And it turns out that a lot of A-list people, when I was like ready to be like, hey, let's talk. They had kind of moved away from the technical communication content strategy, the content creation side of things. So it was like, well, it was just, and I mean, that's not a great excuse for that one because there's tens of other people to talk about, but it was like, well, where do I go from here? And it was just at that time, things were really busy with work. Um, so it was just time to like, Hey, you know what, let's take a break. Let's, um, you know, let's send, um, you know, it ends up being three and a half years now. So, um, you know, it, it is what it is, but that was kind of the, it was a confluence of things. I think for me, um, I pod faded initially because, uh, I decided that I would rather spend more of my time working on the writing aspect of, of some posts I was working on some series. And I felt like, uh, the podcasts were sort of a detour or sort of a, a, a way that would, uh, consume time from me <clears throat> that I could otherwise devote elsewhere. But, um, honestly, when we had that spectrum panel on podcasting and blogging and so on, which, which was mostly about podcasting, it was hardly at all about blogging with you, me yeah. and Zora, uh, <clears throat> Mutabana. Um, it sort of reminded me because there was so much enthusiasm during this session. And I started to remember, I was like, you know what? Podcasting, it was actually a lot of fun. And also I thought about like the people that I could recognize in the tech world and they were all like podcasters. I, I think a lot of times I read an article here, I, I read an article there, but I, I don't, it doesn't stick out to me who's writing them a lot of times, especially hmm. if they're, they're on Hacker News or something and I'm just like getting them from a feed. But the audio stuff, like, yeah, it's way more intimate. You so, you so much, like you recognize who's speaking in a much more noticeable way and it sticks and it's sort of like, it's, it's a much closer experience. Um, I was thinking of some of the people in our industry who podcast, Scriptorium, they've got a podcast and then heredo has got a podcast and, uh, you know, uh, and Scott Abel's got a whole podcast network at this point, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, when you listen to somebody for half hour, an hour in your headphones is kind of a space and, uh, it's memorable. It's kind of a nice connection. So I thought, let me try getting back into podcasting again and see if I can kind of not spend too much time on it, but also kind of make, make it valuable. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, I think you and I started talking about that right before that we were on that panel. Like I was thinking about it along the lines too. I think as I had a little bit more time, you know, now that I'm going into the office three days a week post pandemic, I have time to listen to podcasts and get inspired. And that one, yeah, that, that, that panel discussion we had was really, it was really cool. And when we reached out and said, Hey, let's do a podcast about podcasting. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. So, so yeah, that's why it's permanent hiatus or maybe indefinite hiatus is the better word. But, you know, once again, you know, you inspired me in the beginning because you were one of the few people doing podcasts for tech comm people. And then, you know, again, we've been, you've been doing podcasts and talking about AI and I'm like, all right, you know, between you and that, uh, that panel it was like, all right, let's do something. Well, I, I also started to think about the the video aspect of podcasts a little bit more too, because um I was I was trying to update some things on my I was trying to fix my podcast feed first of all to make sure it was completely valid, you know across three hundred episodes I had a lot of like stuff that was making it so Pocket Casts for example couldn't read my feed and all, hmm. but um but then I saw that like the Google Podcast Player was being sort of deprecated in favor of YouTube Music. Um, hmm. And I started to move my stuff over to YouTube and I saw that YouTube has a podcast uh, feature and I was like, wait a minute, but these are videos. This is kind of weird. Um, do you think that like, what do you think of the video aspect of podcasts? I know This Week in Tech has, a, has an audio feed and they have a video feed. Do you ever, you ever watch the video feed or is it just audio? I mean, I used to, um, but for when I'm on the train, you know, I'm kind of just zoned out and it's just, I don't want to watch anything while I'm on the train. It's just, it's basically audio. I think because, you know, when I started it was audio, but primarily, you know, I'm, I'm basically staring out the window, listening to someone talk in my ears. 
So there was one person who was a content marketer that I had. And she, back in the day, this was a long time ago, she asked me to put the podcast on YouTube. I'm like, but it's audio. But she's like, okay, please do it anyhow. And it's like, (laughs) okay, that's weird. But I did. I mean, it was just a simple upload. But so I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it depends. And I think it depends. I really think it depends. Like where you're doing your podcast. Like if you're in a gym working out, you're probably going to watch, you're probably going to listen or, you know, if you're commuting like me, you know, if you're, especially if you're driving, then you're probably going to want to watch audio, or at least I hope you would think that you would want to listen to audio instead of watching video while driving your car. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I think it really depends, but it seems like more and more now, like a video is a required element. And then the person has the option of whether to, you know, watch the video or listen to the audio. So I think I, I, you know, and there's really not that much investment like you said, Zencaster, there's other tools that are doing this automatically. So, you know, I think it's, I think, yes, I think the time has come to have to have audio, to have to have video with audio. That's what I yeah. think. You know, I, I'm still trying to figure out the video aspect. I mean, it's more than just putting up a webcam. I, I am not good at video. For example, I struggle to look at the right spot on in, in these things. I have to physically look at the webcam and it's not what I'm used to because like you are down here, the camera's yeah. up here and it's like, uh, uh, anyway, but, um, here's what really persuaded me about YouTube is, uh, the auto auto transcription feature. Uh, the fact huh. that you upload anything and now there's automatic transcripts that you can access. I've been doing this Every time there's a long video and I think, is this worth watching? I copy the transcript. I paste it into an AI tool like Claude or ChatGPT or, or some other tool and just get a quick summary. It's quite nice because like the transcript alone is not very readable. Uh, I mean, it's painfully painful to go through it uh, verbatim. So I usually have mm. the, the, uh, the AI tool make it readable. And, and it's pretty enjoyable. But I think like not only do these transcripts um, make your content more discoverable and accessible, I'm pretty sure they're gonna, they're being translated or they can be translated into a lot of different languages. So you just have a lot more reach. And um, even if it's strictly an audio podcast in Camtasia Studio, they have these little audio uh, thing. Sorry, what what's audio animation where you have an audio file and like you can have a little heartbeat wave that kind of like uh moves with the the audio sound somehow like all i'm saying is even if you don't have video you can still upload them uh even if it's just a static image you know oh the other thing about the video component that i was really kind of excited about um if you ever wanted to do like slides with your audio to have a visual accompaniment uh, you can so easily produce that with like chat GPT now with the Dolly integration. Um, I was doing this podcast on this book that I had read about cycling and I picked out like 12 key points and then just created images for each of the points really fast and use those as like a visual for the podcast. And I was like, wow, you, you can really do this much faster now. Yeah. I mean, and I think, you know, going back to the video, I mean, the part of a video is difficult is that, you know, I was practicing this with Zoom, making sure that everything looked okay, that, you know, that I, the, the microphone was close enough, that kind of stuff, because I haven't done this in a while. But usually, and I was telling you before we recorded, that I usually have a boom stand with my mic on it and a pop filter. But the problem with that is with video, because we're recording video, you would see this black thing in my face with the microphone, and you wouldn't be able to see me. Um, also I was using zoom to test the background and because I have it blurred automatically when we were using, now we're using Google meet, there's no blur. And I'm like, Oh, I should probably get a few of those things that look messy off of the back of my screen. So, you know, I think, I think that's a component that you have to think about too, is like, do you have the space to do a video podcast or the right thing? I mean, apologies for the mess, but that's how I live. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that you have to consider, like, and you said, Hey, I see you have a drum set. Like you didn't know I had a drum set. Like that's one of the things that you have to think about. Um, but yeah, I think, I think what you're saying about the transcription is interesting because I, at one point I had looked into doing transcription of my podcast because it's accessible and not everyone can listen to a podcast, but at the time it was kind of pricey. It was like a dollar a minute or something like that. And I'm like, 
doing the cost. I mean, I mean, if you do an hour and a half podcast, that's going to cost you money. So, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't feasible. And I had looked into a few automated options at the time, but they were really terrific. So, you know, obviously AI has come a long way, um, especially in the past couple of years. So I could see how it would be very easy to use something like YouTube to make an automatic transcription and then have it translate. That's all built in there. That's pretty amazing. Like we couldn't have done that in 2015. Yeah. I mean, that's the same reason I never transcribed my, my podcast. I think I tried it a couple of times and I, on my own and there's no way I was going to do that, that every time it's so tedious. It was like, it was sort of depressingly mind numbing, but uh, I wanted to hit upon something else you said about using video conference tools like Zoom or Google Meet. I, I initially tried to go to these tools because, like, they're bread and butter for. I mean, we use mm. them every day in the pandemic, right? And so they're very. It's very normal to to use them, but their audio recordings are not very good. Like, um, hmm, yeah, I tried, I tried both Zoom and Google Meet, and I think the problem is they. They don't like record the audio locally on your computer, like it's recorded on the server. Maybe I'm not ent entirely sure, but oh, they are. But the audio quality was was bad enough that I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this again. Because um, I, I mean, I also don't really watch the video feeds of podcasts I listen to. For example, Hard Fork recently switched from audio to audio and video, if you want. But uh, yeah, I just listen to audio, and so if that audio is is kind of compromised and not very engaging. It's a huge turnoff. I mean, I don't really want to listen to audio that I can't hear very well or that's mm -hmm. uh, not enjoyable. So um, didn't really want to sacrifice that with just your standard mainstream v video conference tools. Yeah, I think there was at one point I was working on a podcast for uh, the LavaCon conference with Metchak Molasani. And I think there was someone like who could only use like Google or back to, you know, whatever it was. It's like one of the big systems, like they couldn't, you know, and the, the recording was audible. It's terrible, unfortunately. Um, so yes, I get it. Um, and yeah, so I get it. it that, you know, the audio quality does matter. There are certain people that I've listened to or tried to listen to their podcast. And I'm like, this sounds terrible. I just, <laughs> you know, there's so much other, you know, there's so much out there to listen to. Like, I don't want to listen to, poor audio. And I knew because I wanted to do some, my own audio production that I wanted to sound good as well. So like, I wanted to make sure that the product I was putting out there was going to have audio quality. So it wasn't a deterrent to someone to say, well, this might, person might have something interesting to say, or their guest may have something interesting to say, but if I can't hear it, then what's the point? Yeah. Now you said that you initially use the double ender technique, which is where <laughs> you record on your side and then the, the guest records on their side and you sync them together. Hopefully they've been recorded at the same audio rates. But uh, you said that that was uh, kind of tedious. What, what was that like? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and that's how, you know, Dan Benjamin, who had done the back to work podcast. Also at the time I was starting to do, uh, look into podcasting, created a podcast, you know, about podcasting. Uh, so it was like lessons on how to podcast and stuff like that. And he talked about the double ender and that's what he was doing with his, cause he does an interview show. So it's a double ender and essentially he would send, or you would have the person on their end download uh, an open source tool called audacity, which is still a great audio editor and recorder. Um, and basically you would send them a link to um, your Dropbox or your Google Drive or whatever, and they would uh, download the MP3, record the MP3, and send it to me in one of these services. So, and then basically you would have to tie everything together. You would have the separate audio tracks. You'd have to line everything up and make sure that everything's synced right. And, you know, I'm, again, I'm a perfectionist. So, you know, I was at the point then where I'm going to edit out every single um and every single ah uh and make this sound like, a you know, sound really, really professional. Um, and it was overkill. Um, but then it turns out as part of doing the LavaCon podcast, there were people who I interviewed who weren't really technical and didn't understand how to download the software or record it or upload it. Or even some people I think had bandwidth issues. So it wasn't easy for them to upload files quickly or easily. So it became a thing of, hey, you know, in order to keep doing this, I have to find a better way than this double ender thing. And that's when I had found other tools. Um, you know, Zencaster was one of them. Uh, Felice Banner um, from the Lava Cotton podcast as well mentioned that to me. Like, hey, this is one of the things. So it was really challenging 
um, from a technical perspective, from an editing perspective. Um, and, you know, it just was time consuming and kind of inconvenient for the guests. So they kind of had to go through a lot. Like I had to document the whole process. I had a whole, you know, technical writing document that I shared via Google Drive saying, hey, this is what you need to do. Here's what you download, all this stuff. So it was a lot for both for both sides of it. And for the time, it worked pretty well. But as things changed and then as, I, as things expanded, it became a necessity to find a tool that was was one way recording and downloaded thing with good audio quality and was less technical for them. They just join a link like we do now. I clicked a link to join your Zencaster recording, and here we are. It was a lot different when I started, and a lot you know less, there was a lot fewer tools out there. Yeah, yeah. The- this is this is the second podcast I've used Zencaster with, and um, it it does make things easier. I I feel like I know it's been around for a number of years. I feel like in the earlier days, band my bandwidth wasn't as good, so I was a host on somebody's Zencaster show, and I remember the bandwidth kind of cutting out a little bit or buffering, and I was like, "This is lame." But so far, the platform has has been pretty good. But uh. I'm sort of in a dilemma right now about podcasting platforms because I think a lot of the platform you choose depends on the type of show you want. If you're inter- interviewing a guest, like we're chatting right now, um, Zencaster is ideal uh, because you know you're you're there. But if I wanted to share my screen right now, I don't think I can do that. Um, <laughs> which I think is crazy. Like, why can't I share oh. my screen on this? Huh? Okay. I could just be missing how to do it, but I'm pretty sure you can't. So if I'm going to do a solo podcast and I want to show my screen, yeah. I'm using Camtasia Studio, but Camtasia Studio has no ability to like contact and record a, an online guest. Um, but my dilemma is what is the best podcast format for me? I've certainly like uh, played around with a lot of different formats. I've tried I've tried the the interview format. Um, that's how I initially started. It's great because uh, the person who you interview often has a ton of knowledge and it makes it very easy. And I also really like dialogue uh, as I'm listening to podcasts. Uh, another another format is like, it's not so much an interview, but just like a co-host t- style format. Mm. This is... This is what like a lot of podcasts are. For example, Hard Fork, that's one, kind of one of my favorite podcasts right now. They have one, one uh, two hosts who are the main hosts, and one of them is kind of the, the quirky, funny guy, <laughs> and the other is a little bit more serious, and uh, they play off each other really well. <laughs> In fact, I, I had no idea what they looked like, and um, when they finally had some video, I didn't realize that the guy who is like, who's the funny one, who's really um, witty he's tall. <laughs> I was like, dang, I, I had no idea. Anyway, uh, he's also an excellent writer. I started subscribing to his newsletter and so on. Anyway, there's another format of just like a person speaking. Um, one of one of the podcasts I listen to is a sports podcast called on the ball with Rick Buecher. It's kind of like an NBA breakdown. This guy's got a ton of like sports, uh, analysis, um, in his head and he's very, he's smart, but they're short. Like they're, they're usually only 15 to 20 minutes. I don't think I could listen to one person for like an hour. Uh, but then you've got really in depth ones. Lex Friedman has like th- two, three, four hour interviews with people. Um, I've never actually made it through. I've, I've attempt, I think I've got 40 minutes into one, but, uh, what is your preferred format? And like, how do you see, like, what, what's your take on the right format? I don't, I mean, I don't know if there's a right format. I think it really depends. I mean, you've even done a panel one with um, the right to docs podcast. Like, I mean, I guess, you know, I'm going to interview you through you. You, I'm going to interview you for a second. Like, how was that? Because you had people who were in completely different time zones doing a panel discussion every couple of months or whatever that was, how was that logistically? And I mean, how did that work out? Mm, I think logistically that's why it faded because we had one guy in Berlin and another person in Australia. So between the Pacific time zone, California, Mm. California, Berlin, and Australia, there was like a one hour time, (laughs) time availability and it just wasn't workable. It was also kind of hard to figure out who was doing what. I mean, um, I was mostly okay. doing the the website uh, details and like another 
to the others were like finding guests and coordinating that. And I think some of them, I think they got a little worn out and then, um, mm. job roles changed. But the larger question is like, uh, how does a group work? Like, I think if you have a co-host and you have a group discussion, you've got to have a lot of like, um, uh, I don't know, fun conversation with, with people. I, I'm sort of a serious type. I don't, I'm not great at that. So I don't know if it was like the, I don't know if I was the best sort of person for a group podcast. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think it depends. Like, I mean, I wanted to do an interview podcast because I wanted to talk. My my subhead on my co- podcast was the people behind the content. So I wanted you to get to know who that person was, as well as what their expertise was or talk about the topic of the month or whatever we had discussed. Um, so it was really, and that's what I always ended with, what do you like to do when you're not doing your job? So I wanted to know who these kind of people were and what they were doing outside of their professional lives. So for me, that, and again, I, like I said, I wanted to do it to, you know, so potential employers, this is how I can treat your clients and your, and your, 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 uh, you know, your users. So I wanted to do an interview format. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, as you were talking, I'm like, what are the podcasts that I like to listen to? And it seems like there are two or more people every week that do that kind of talk about different topics, but it's like, there are two essentially kind of co-hosting kind of thing. Um, and one is a panel discussion. Um, but it's usually like a couple of people, like a couple of regulars talking to each other every week. And like you said, you know, you really get to know these people over time. Like I've been listening to, uh, back to work for eight or nine years now. Like I know Mm -hmm. these people's families, their parents, you know, their family names, this, that, and the other thing I know where they're traveling, you know, I know so much about them. And I actually wrote Merlin Mann a thank you letter because he had done so much to inspire me and so many things I had learned over the time that I've listened to him for nine years. And I was like, Hey man, you've made a difference in my life. I just wanted to say thank you. And he wrote back a nice message and really seemed sincere and appreciating it. But I think, I mean, for me, that's the, you know, and I don't know if I could listen to just one person all the time, like, especially if it's a video format, like just watching someone who's talking to a camera with a podcast mic in front of them, isn't engaging to me. Um, And I don't know if I want to listen to a model, like, like you said, for an hour, like, you know, there are some podcasts that are like hours long and I'm just like, come on, I got to commute. I want to listen to everything, <laughs> wrap it up in, 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 you know, two hours here, basically tops. Like there are some um, going over to YouTube. There are some city skylines video or people like live streaming city building games and they're like live streaming for four hours. I'm like, how are you have time to do that? First of all. And second of all, how do you expect me to sit here for four hours watching you build a city? Um, so I understand the time. I think it's a big, a lot of it time constraint and a lot of it, like you said, is logistics with, Hey, there are people in different time zones. And I mean, now, you know, I, we both work at global companies. We know how it is to sync up with different meeting times when people are in Bangalore and Salt Lake city and London and New York, it's, it's always hard to to, to do those things. Mm. So I think it's probably, you know, what are your goals with your podcast? What do you want your users to know? And I think, that's kind of the format. And I've been personally for me, apparently I seem to like panels now that I think about it. And I never thought about it Hmm. until just now. Well, I definitely like the same kind of podcasts. I think as you, where you have two people, it's very rare that, that a single podcast actually work or a single speaker works for me. I mean, they have to be pretty, pretty articulate or, or just have a good delivery. But the problem is like finding that co-host is, is, is a challenge because as you say, uh, the person has to be somewhat in a similar time zone, right? Um, and you want to be different enough that you're not like just having the same opinion, but also kind of pleasant enough where somebody can disagree without it coming across as off-putting for a listener. Uh, I like to play devil's advocate. I like to be contrarian, hmm. but um, uh, I I know that like if I'm listening to a podcast and somebody is offering a different point of view and they're and they come across as stubborn and just like opinionated. I don't like that. So um, it, it's tricky. And so I think part of me faded a little bit because of that. I was like, yeah, I never really, I never really had that podcast. And I, I initially was podcasting uh, with the interview technique because I thought, oh, this gives me access to everybody and I can, I can learn from them and they get a, they get visibility and, you know, whatever else you get out of being on a podcast. But uh, 
I know that uh, like the, the problem with the interview format is that unless the topic aligns with what listeners want, they'll often skip it. This is what Leo Laporte said on, a, on a This Week is Tech. They had another podcast going called Triangulation or something, and he had interviewed okay, yeah, think- tech experts. And he said during one of them, he's like, he loved doing it, but he noticed that they, they only had like 25% as much listenership because people would, or people would skip, uh, they'd skip podcasts because of the topic didn't resonate with them. They'd skip it. Whereas news is sort of evergreen. It's always, mm. uh, mm. a weekly timely thing, you know, but there's way more news in the tech space than there is in the tech writing space. That's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, I think too, I mean, if you're, you know, if you wanted to have a co-host, that's a big commitment for both people. Like, and you know, one of a one person may be more into it than the other, so, and that might come through and then that person might be like, well, hey, you know what? This isn't kind of working out. I'm kind of done. So, you know, there's the logistics of it and then the commitment side of things, too. Like the guys that I listen to regularly, like I know um, Dan and Merlin record on uh, Tuesdays at like 9 a.m. Pacific time. And they've been doing this for years and years and years. Like they do it as part of a schedule. Like, it's well, they're making, you know, they're making ads money from it. So it is basically their job. But you know, they were, you know, you have to have that, that commitment from everybody to make a successful podcast and make, have a one, you know, with some longevity, like, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, as long as that's the thing about, I think an interview show, like as long as you, you know, I mean, there's always should be an endless list of people who you can talk to. So it's, you know, so it's easier to do it that way because it's a one and done kind of thing. It's not a ongoing commitment. And I mean, again, you know, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. And if you're going to monetize, I mean, that's a big question too. Um, so I think that all has to come into play with, if you're going to do a podcast, there's some things to think about. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you definitely have to figure out what, what it is you want to get out of it. What's going to make it worthwhile for you. And if that means uh, one hour long monologues, you know, maybe you find that like delivering that leads to some epiphanies that are very valuable, but you might find also that like, gosh, if I don't get very much feedback and not enough clicks and it's not very popular, that can be demotivating as well. So you have to think about like, what, what do people want to listen to as well and find some kind of balance there. And that's tricky. Um, Hey, I wanted to talk if we might, if we can shift gears a little bit about some of the, some of the advancements that come with the audio editing, especially around AI lately. Um, this is, uh, I don't know if you've ever played around with some tools like Descript or even now Camtasia Studio with their Audiate integration, um, where you can essentially edit the audio uh, by editing the text that goes along with it. Is that something you've played around with? I, I've heard of Descript. I don't remember if I played around with it or not, or if it was around when I was still doing my thing. Um and I think I probably wouldn't have put too much time and effort into it thinking about like, because I had done, the, like, like you said, um, in terms of the accessibility and in terms of the um, the transcription, that I knew that the automated transcription wasn't great. So I'm like, uh, you know, I mean, I guess it's different when you're t- typing yeah. in a text editor. Like, I think that's what the script does. But I don't know. I mean, like, I don't understand. I guess where my question is, where I'm confused is, how does that translate? Like, are you just editing words or does it make it sound more mechanical? Like I, does it sound natural? Like it, and there's edit intro and there's good pauses because, you know, again, <laughs> with going back to audio quality, I want it to sound like a natural conversation and not yeah. like a, at a high, highly edited robotic sound. So I'm curious about how that would handle that. But, you know, but I do think the potential has got to be there for AI to take this further and further as that technology develops. Yeah, the pauses thing is is difficult because I I'm with you if if uh, because these tools will also like automatically identify ums and ahs and just take those out for you, nice. and I I'm assuming they don't just like create all kinds of unnatural t- uh, gaps or 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 an absence of gaps and just like cut from one word to the, to the other, but honestly I I think. Um, I don't think many of the podcasts I listen to incorporate that level of editing. That's, that's almost more for like some kind of highly polished enterprise script where you, Mm, I don't know, but okay. Now here's another AI tool that's becoming more ubiquitous and that's, um, AI generated voices. Uh, maybe you're listening to an audio book and, uh, 
you know, flawless narrator and then find out that it's uh, an Android of some kind, right? It's like, it's AI generated. Do you ever, are, will you ever listen to an AI voice uh, or do you just want to listen to human voice? It would have to be really compelling for me to listen to an AI generated thing. And I know, you know, you've done a lot of experimentation with AI. I've been doing some here and there and that, you know, it's, it's, it's choppy. I mean, and actually I ran something um, locally on my, my old computer. I just got a new computer, but it was slow. Like it, you would see that generating each word on the thing. So, you know, and it's, it seems very choppy to me. So I don't think currently that it's viable, but I wouldn't, I, I, I mean, again, to go back to the podcast I listen to, a lot of it is the interaction and the knowledge of that human and who, who that person is. And I think that's part of the interest for me for a lot of the stuff that I listen to. Um, so I don't know. Like, I listen to a podcast called New Jersey is the World, you know, obviously living in New Jersey. Uh, and I don't listen to all of them, but I listen to them because it's these guys who live in New Jersey and they have a history and they talk to different interesting people. Um, how can you replicate that with AI? Like, especially domain knowledge like that. Like they're from, you know, this town called West Orange. I'm a tem- in a town called Clifton. Like unless, how do you make that sound natural as a conversational tone as an AI currently? Again, in the future, who knows? But, you know, we've seen that things have come along pretty quickly in the AI world and everyone's moving at a fast pace to get something AI because it's a buzzword. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'd say now, no, in the future, maybe we won't even know it's an AI. Maybe I'm thinking more in terms of audiobooks because, yeah, I agree with you that like it would be very hard to replicate the witty banter and interactions of a of a co-hosted podcast. Um, but let's say somebody just wants an audio version of a of an article that they're reading. You know that that's something that they could potentially easily outsource to AI and so on for for people who strictly want an audio version to consume about things. But um, are there any other in radio? Oh, it is. There are. Yeah, there are. are, Yeah. um, I have some people who work in that industry and they've had their radio stations like they got rid of their news people because their news is read by AI now. It's read by automated. So so it's me and it's, you know, I guess for something like that, I mean, if it's only a couple of minutes, like it's a news thing like that, like maybe someone AI reading it as long as it sounds natural. But that's not the way I get my news. I prefer, but, but I don't know. But I, but it's happening in date in AI, indeed, in radios and radio stations. So you know, I mean, so I don't know. I mean, yeah. again, I don't know. Let's see here. Um, what do you think is the ideal length of a of a podcast? Uh, you you mentioned like under two hours earlier, which most people that's a lot, um, and. I know there's one guy uh, who has a 10 minute tech com podcast, Ryan something. I forgot his last name, but he tries to keep it short. Uh, some people really only want to listen on the commute, which tends to be 30 minutes, right? Hmm. <clears throat> What's your philosophy about length? I didn't want to put a length on my podcast because some things you talk about, like I've had 45 minute podcast. Sometimes I've had an hour and a half, two, or I don't know if I had two hours, but it was kind of those things like, let's just see where this thing goes and play out. Um, that said, most of the podcasts I listen to, I guess, are probably around that hour length. And I think because that's my commute time, it makes sense. Sometimes I go an hour and a half or so, but I think somewhere between half an hour and an hour is probably the ideal length. Because I think it longer than that, it's, it's a lot to ask from your listener, unless you're going to space it out. And then in that case, like, why not make smaller podcast, you know, smaller yeah. episodes and have them a series kind of thing instead of having one huge long podcast? Because my goodness, what do you, you know, what do you do on a four hour podcast if you need a bio break? You know, yeah. I mean, one of those, you know, if you were to go, one of the guests are recording, like, that's, a, that's a big ask. And I think, I, you know, like I said, with the video part, like, I don't want, you know, four hours, that's a commitment. That's like a book. Like, I've got <laughs> a lot of better things to do with my time you know, for four hours and listen to someone talk at me. Yeah. I'm with you about the same time period. If it's rare that I actually tune into something for longer than an hour, but, um, 
Hey, I, uh, and, and I think we're kind of getting towards the end of this as well. Just kind of <laughs> my own sense of time, this conversation, but, uh, I, there's something that's still sort of, uh, unsettled in my mind from our previous podcast panel with, with you, me and Zora. There seem to be a lot of excitement for newbies to, or not newbies, new new people, whether new to tech com or new to podcasting, to kind of jump in. I feel like a lot of people were were seriously like toying with the idea of, hey, I'm going to start a podcast, and all these tools are making it easier. You know, it, it takes like ten minutes to figure out ZenCaster. It it doesn't take a long time to figure out how to like do a YouTube channel. Like, why is it that uh, we're not seeing more podcasters? It it's, doesn't take a lot of time to, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It, it depends what kind of content you have, right? But but theoretically, uh, writing a 2,000-word article is going to take you longer than recording a 20-minute podcast. <laughs> so w- why yeah. don't we see more podcasters? Why has TechCom been sort of very scarce in the number of podcasts over the last 15-plus years? Man, you got another hour? Like, I don't, I, I, I don't even, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, you took a hiatus, I took a hiatus. Like, I mean, there were never a huge amount of audience. I mean, I, so I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's obviously opportunity like Zora. I didn't know Zora until we were on that panel because I wasn't really looking for any tech comp podcasts. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Is it that? And what it's curious, and let's think about this because there's, I'm on Reddit quite a bit, and there's a technical writing subreddit, and all the time it's like, I'm a blah. How do I become a technical writer? And there's, obviously, there's tons of curiosity about the 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 career itself. So I'm wondering, I mean, to, to your question, like, why doesn't that translate? Why isn't there pe- more people out there? Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I mean. Like I said, yeah. I saw my numbers kind of dropping. I think maybe it's just increased competition. Like maybe people don't want to listen to, to stuff about their job. They want to just zone out at the end of the day. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I really huh. don't have a good answer for that. Yeah, I think there's probably a host of reasons and I don't have any answer either. But I, I definitely know that for me, I've I've always felt more comfortable uh, operating in the written world rather than the the video world. When I watch people on YouTube who have successful YouTube channels and they're doing the shorts or whatever, like they're just, they've got charisma and they know how to, I mean, they're almost like theater people. I don't know. They just, <laughs> they, they come across so much better in, in that space. And, and, uh, you know, there's not a tremendous amount of interest in, uh, audio and video production when you're, when you're working in tech com. But I mean, you have the, the whole music background, and so you're probably a lot more familiar with the tools. There is, of course, a technical hurdle. Uh, I want I figured out my setup and I've sort of left it as is, but it's kind of complicated. Um, I mean, when you want to use an XLR mic, that is. Uh, I'm using an XLR mic now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I bought I bought a digital audio workstation right before I stopped podcasting incidentally. So that was great timing. But yeah, I mean... <laughs> But I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, when you and I started podcasting, there was a much more of, of you know, an effort involved. But again, but, you know, I mean, especially in the technical side, like recording, editing, doing all that stuff. And like you said, the access now is you download a trial, you know, you, you sign up for Zencaster, you get a seven day trial and you see, hey, it does everything for you. It's just a thing for me. But I think maybe it's just it's just signal to noise like you know, I think especially people on YouTube or like podcasters who are doing this with ads and stuff like that, it's a job and it's got to be a job. And people like the quote unquote influencers are out there hustling all the time. And, you know, as writers, you know, some of a lot of us are introverts. Um, so maybe we don't want to be on a video that much. I mean, I yeah. did, you know, some theater in college. I've done radio DJ. I've been in front of people basically my entire life. So, mm-hmm. you know, that came in natural, you know, it kind of came naturally to me, but being on video and like i am been staring at myself for 45 minutes in this little corner here and making sure that I look okay for some reason instead of looking at you. So maybe that's it. Like we're a lot of, a lot of us are introverts. A lot of us are heads down kind of folks. Like maybe we don't want to be seen. I don't know, but I, you know, I, yeah. I don't know. Hey, someone start a podcast or invite Tom and I on whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I definitely think there's opportunity. I mean, there's so many, 
so many interesting things about tech calm that you could focus on, especially now with the whole AI uh, explosion. It really makes it an interesting space. And, and there's definitely opportunity. I mean, there's opportunity for 10 podcasters. I mean, there's like <laughs> in the same way that there's so many different niches and interests. I want to I want to have podcasts on very specific, narrow topics. I don't want to have um, introductory stuff. You know, that's not what engages me. Uh, you mentioned the, this huge curiosity people have about entering the field. And I know that some people have really uh, taken to that. And they, those would be great podcasts, you know, to focus on, like, how do you get started? And what are some common tips, uh, tools that you might use and some some pitfalls and so on. But anyway, there's opportunity for any sort of niche. And uh, that's why I like podcasting. I, I picked it up. Honestly, I was writing an article back in 2006 for the STC intercom about podcasting. Mm. I, I love to listen to podcasts. Uh, and I thought, you know what, I should probably create some just to like get a feel for it. And I was like, oh, this is actually not bad. This is not hard at all. And it's kind of fun. So uh, it stuck with me from then. Anyway. I think there's lots of opportunity. And like you said, I wish more people would take that opportunity because it, the barriers to entry are next to nothing at this point. So yeah. why not? Like, yeah, why not? Like I didn't have great numbers, but I had numbers and it was kind of cool. Like if I had 30 or 200 downloads or, you know, 500, like, Hey, that's pretty cool. People are listening to my stuff and, you know, so it's, and it's still out there. And that's the thing. Like I've left something behind that I can be proud of. And I think, you know, yeah. if you want to get your name out there and you want to leave something behind that gives back to your community, podcast is a great opportunity to do that, especially if you don't want to write after yeah. coming home from work and writing all day. So, Ed, we've talked about a lot of different topics here. Um, any any topics we haven't hit that you think uh, are must discuss topics? I mean, it's. I mean, I think we summed it up as, hey, we need more podcasters. Like, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe it's opportunity time again. Maybe I'll start podcasting because no one else is. Like, you know, this whole AI thing, like everyone's like, is AI taking my job? And from what I've seen, no, not yet. But there's opportunities there to talk about structure and content because it seems like it does a lot better with structured content than kind of just freeform stuff, at least from my experiments. Um, you know, I think there's tons of things. I mean... And your audience doesn't have to be just tech writers. Like there's a need for people who know about structured content and how to write correctly and about content strategy. So I think, you know, and I like think a lot of the people who were podcasting for a long time haven't or aren't really, they've kind of moved on. So mm -hmm. there's lots of opportunity there, but I think, you know, I think again, the, the space is, Hey, I'm a how do I become a tech writer or, how does this AI thing affect my job and what tools can I use to AI to make my job easier? Like I've done a lot of work with, I've learned Python over the past year and using Google Bard to kind of write the questions and understand how to structure the questions. Like there's a lot of cool things to think about there because, you know, especially AI, it's like, it's all about how you ask the question is how do you get the answer? And like, how do we as technical writers add that value and say, well, here's, you know, documentation on how to do this, or here's, you know, how to structure your content. So that way, no matter what question people ask, they're getting the right result. So I think there's lots and lots, um, lots there to, to ponder. And I know you're, you're scraping the surface of that. So what do you think about that? Well, as you were talking about that you made me realize, um, if you use podcasting to learn, like if you want to learn about AI, you know, and you do some podcasts about AI, it's sort of a perfect match. And that's what's always kept me either blogging or podcasting since 2006 is because it's a tool for learning. You know, it's like, how do you, what do you want to learn about? How do you make sense of that? What do you reflect on that? And share and get back feedback from uh, other people that informs your own thinking. So yeah, whatever you're doing, whatever you're learning about, it will fit nice, nicely into a podcast. And what do I think about AI? I actually, um, you know, I, I, I love AI stuff. Um, I, it blows my mind. I use it like multiple, I use it probably a dozen or more times a day. I'm like interacting with, with AI tools. Um, and I can't understand why other people aren't. Uh, so <laughs> I, I've sort of had to, 
I've had to tone down my enthusiasm because I'm just (laughs) met with skeptics all around me. My wife doesn't want to hear anything about AI. My people, people just kind of sigh when Tom gets going again on something. So I'm just kind of like, you know what? I'm gonna have fun. I was walking in the park the other day, uh, and I saw um, some crows were like flapping their wings in the in a pond because it was raining here too. And I was like, what are they doing? So I took a picture of them and I was like, hey, chat GPT, what's going on here? And it was like, oh, these crows are doing what's called anting, where they're cleaning their wings from uh, uh, dirt and, and bugs Jeez. and so on. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, now tell me, tell me some more interesting facts about crows, you know, things that I of course, we see them every day, but it was like, oh, it taught me a lot of interesting things. So in other words, I see these tools as a way to kind of become more curious about the world around us. Uh, you can ask a question and maybe get an answer. It's uh, it's kind of mind-blowing how specific and conversational they, they are. Um, I was inter- interfacing with Claude, C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I the other day, okay. and it ended one of its responses with a question back to me and that was huh. not a rhetorical question. And I was blown away. I was like, Oh my gosh, we're having a conversation and it feels very personal now. Huh. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm big into AI. I'll probably do more podcasts about AI, but I'm also kind of exploring other themes as well because I hmm. think it can, the AI stuff can be overwhelming, but um, anyway, yeah, whatever you're learning about, it probably would make for a good podcast blog or some other effort or, or not, but uh, you know, it's definitely something that complements your working life. And I think the other thing we should talk about is like how different technology has been in the eight years since you and I started. Well, I think you started before I did. So like even the eight years, like we talked, you know, you said, let's talk about podcasting. Like I haven't done this in a while. Like I'm not being <laughs> up on the technology, but like, and it's the same thing with the panel discussion too. Like, I realized how many mistakes I made along the way doing things and learned. And, you know, a lot of it came out of necessity and whatever, but it was part of the growing process. And I don't like making mistakes. Again, I said I'm a perfectionist. So it was to look back and say, hey, I did all this stuff wrong, but it still came out okay, And it all worked out really, really well. You know, it's just and now it's so easy. Like all that stuff that I used to do, you can do like by typing text. It's crazy. And it's just. That's what I think it's cool thing about the, the parallel between podcasting, the technology and how podcasting's changed over the past eight years and the speed at which, you know, generative AI is working now. Like it's leaps and it's just the speed is amazing, but it's, you know, and it's just cool to see looking back on, hey, the body of work that I did, um, it was pretty cool. And I'm even though I made a ton of freaking mistakes, I learned from it and it turned out OK. Yeah. I think even though podcasting has evolved a lot, it's still very much as it was 15 years ago. I mean, the, the co-host format, the, 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 the ability to dive into a topic and, and have a valuable discussion about it. Um, that's really the core of it. And I think it's, it's persisted. I mean, I, I have a a commute where I bike part way to work and I always listen to podcasts. Um, it's become just really part of, my routine and many other people's routines. And so I think it's, it's definitely a format that's here to stay and there's um, plenty of opportunity to, to kind of engage in it at whatever level time commitment format and so on. Um, But, but just uh, personally, I want to try to do more podcasts related to the posts I'm writing. I'm like, um, if I've written something about it, why not create an audio version of it? It, it can be kind of fun and uh, it's hmm. a way to increase the, the sort of reach as well as maybe come to some other realizations about the content that I'm writing as I hear myself uh, jabbering on about it, you know? Well, I guess to flip it again, you talked about the script, but like, is there a, and it's, I guess, where AI comes in again. We seem to have been coming back to this AI thing. Like, is there a text to speech thing now where it would basically spit out an audio version of your, of your writing. And I guess question two is, would you want that? Or would you want to be the person reading that or talking about that article? Um, so are you saying, uh, what are you saying? Like, is there AI that would take 
uh, your written content and convert it to audio or the other way around? Correct. Like it yeah. takes your, correct the other it, way around. It'll take, yeah. If you wrote like you, if you wrote a blog post, could you throw oh. chat GPT or an AI at it and have it create an, an audio version of your, of your blog post? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I, I'm sure there's lots of, uh, audio tools that would make the, the Android robotic kind of version, yeah, of it, right? Yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I've actually thought about trying it the other way around, though, where like, let's say that I want to write a blog post, but I don't really know how to start. So maybe I'll just talk for 10 minutes and then feed that transcript into chat GPT or something and say, hey, make a make an articulate blog post out of this, you know, because um, hmm. there's a lot hmm. of like wordsmithing and structuring and uh, uh, that that maybe could be done. I don't know. There's just a lot, a lot of opportunities to experiment. I'm also, I love experimenting with things, so I might try, try something new just for fun. I, I, uh, I, I did try having like AI write content uh, more fully, but lately I've sort of felt like I want to do the writing, so I don't want to mm. source that. But anyway, well, Ed, we've uh, chatted a lot about podcasting and i really appreciate your uh time on this show and and uh, your insights and just your connection as a professional in the field colleague who i can chat with um if people want to find out more about you or content content your podcast or your your other um sites do you have any URLs you want to mention or names you want to mention? Yeah, it's real simple. It's just edmarsh.com, uh, E-D-M-A-R-S-H.com. Um, there's a link to the podcast right in the navigation. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I would, yeah, I mean, I'm on social media, but like not talking professionally anything anymore because it's gone down the tubes. But um, I would say edmarsh.com if you want to reach out to me, you want to learn more, you want to subscribe to the podcast. Because, hey, you know, maybe more will be coming soon. I, I can't say for sure, but it's something to think about. So, and, you know, being on a, po- on a podcast with you and on a panel about podcasting, we, it's like, all right, well, maybe, maybe 2024, it's time to do something else. So we'll see. All right. But thanks thank- for having me on. I appreciate it. It's cool to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ed.